hello everyone uh thanks for staying connected um so so we'll just start the webinar now okay um okay so i just introduced myself so i am nivas so i'm working as a product analyst at bemu bemu technologies um so i'm having mr uh, prana with me now uh so he's going to take care of this particular webinar session so before getting into this webinar i'll just uh, mention the ground rules for the webinar so everyone in this webinar is in the uh, uh, listen only mode so however we have a question box here if you have any questions uh, in between the session uh, please feel free to uh, type in your questions here okay so we are happy to answer your questions so we'll try to uh, <clears throat> we do ha we have an uh, interactive uh, uh chat option here so if you have a question you can ask me if you're not able to answer all uh the questions now uh please don't worry uh so we are uh we send all we give a reply to you uh, for all your questions through an email okay um yeah so we'll uh, start with the webinar now uh so before getting into this i'll just uh give a small introduction about memory technologies so we are the company founded in the year 2002 and we have a decade of decade plus 15 plus years of experience in uh, developing the backup solution for various IT environment. So whether it is a, uh, so a physical machine or virtual machines or a cloud based workloads or if it is a um, small business, enterprise business, whatever the size of the business, Vemu is having the backup solution for everyone. And currently we have set our footprints over 100 plus countries and currently uh, we have 4000 plus uh, partners, channel partners distributed across the globe. Uh, the one of the important thing that we have to tell is so we are uh, one of the company a uh, backup solution vendor providing 24 by 7 backup support and uh, technical support to all our uh, clients customers and partners so coming to today's webinar so today's webinar is titled on the best practices for protecting your data center from disaster so in this uh, webinar so we'll discuss about the, what are the uh, things that you need to do uh, we, we are planning to cover this webinar in two topic so one is about the uh, planning uh, dr planning and the execution phase of the dr so okay so let's see um, uh, in we'll just see what are the things that we are going to cover in this session today so this is the agenda of, for this uh, session so first we'll discuss the criteria for protecting a data center and uh, achieving your objectives how you can uh, achieve your dr objective and how vemu helps in uh, uh, protecting your business critical data from a disaster so after this uh, we'll have a small uh, demonstration so we'll just let you know how uh, to deploy the vemu bds between environment and protecting your business critical data at the end we have a q a so we have a, a live q a discussion so if you have any questions you can just type in your questions and we are we are happy to uh, discuss the questions here so, yeah, so initially I'm just uh, uh, Pranav is going to take uh, is present you with a small set of slides and he will explain you uh, with that uh, DR planning methods and the DR execution phase. Okay, later uh, he will just transfer me uh, the session to me. So then I will take care of the live demonstration. Okay, so this is the uh, agenda for this webinar session. So Pranav, uh, so audience are ready now. So it's time for you to start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Nivas, for that uh, wonderful uh, information about me. And uh, thank you for sharing about the agenda as well as the webinar title about today. So hello, people. Uh, so before starting with the webinar, so according to the statement where I said the best practices for protecting your data center from disaster. So uh, when I have to talk about this, this is something which is important uh, to the topic of present day. So most of the data centers are facing a lot of threats. So either it could be, uh, we'll call it to be a, a disaster now. So that causes a lot of problem that leads to even the downtime uh, causing you the downtime leads you to uh, go out of the business. So there are businesses which has gone out of their livelihood let's see how things have changed and what are the best practices that we could recommend from our side because being as a uh, pro product company in uh, 
backup and disaster recovery uh, platform we have seen many cases which comes up daily asking us for a better practice so we have organized this webinar based on those requests from the customers as well as the uh, executives of uh, different uh, horizons so while taking this webinar let's keep it calm and i'll make sure that i'm going to explain things better clean and neat so that you get a clear identification of what things are happening at the back end of a uh, disaster and how could you protect your environment that is your data center from all those disasters so uh, as said these are the agenda because uh, uh, nivas uh, has already explained you the details so now i'm moving on to the data section uh, data center production criteria so what is the main criteria before i start with uh, the uh, more about the details of uh, better production things i would always suggest you to have a data protection plan a uh, planning is something which is important whenever you run a business or any of the process so you should have a clear defined protection plan so when when it comes to data center almost you should have a prioritized data protection uh, protection plan so before you do all your uh, regular steps of what things to happen you have to keep your data protection in on the top most category so what does this data protection plan talk about when we look at it we should have a data protection plan which is related to backup as well as you have a disaster recovery so these two are two separate uh two separate folios so when i take up with backup so you have something called as uh, the frequent type of backup that you should have so it is according to your environment for example there are people or uh, there are industries that needs a uh, frequent backups they can't even um uh, bear a uh, time uh, difference of uh, 15 to 20 uh, minutes so they should always keep themselves updated and live on their market so that where your rpo and rto plays an important role so i would better suggest it is uh, this is where you have to recognize or you have to identify like which is a better suitable rpo and rto for your environment so based on which you can set your backups or on their scheduling time so for example there are companies which comes up with uh, uh, with uh, without any compromise of having even uh, minimum minutes of uh, Uh, backups that should happen at the back end and there are companies where they can even have a weekly backup that is enough for them to run on with their businesses so that is up to you to decide and then you have a uh, required uh, the data that needs to be required quickly so as i said your backup is different and the recovery is completely different so here while recovering also there should be a priority that you have to set so what type of data that you want to recover immediately so that that is how you scale uh, like you want to recover the data immediately or you have you can have a lot of time so that you can recover the data slowly so this is how your major plannings of rpo and rto comes into your forum and then at last how do you want to store the data do you want to store the data for a long term archival so that you can take the data at any point of time even if the storage has so even if it goes away from your uh, uh, date range then you want to store it archive it for a long term then you can go for long term archival so where you have tape and you have some drives even stored for that purposes so those things are the purposes that can be resolved so these this is the one how you can prioritize your plan so this is something which all the data center should follow the people who are having a data center should follow to have a protection criteria while setting up before we go into the disaster recovery plan so then moving on to the slide i'm um, yeah here is now we are going to define your disaster recovery objective so so far i just gave you an intro about your uh, data center criteria that should be there so now i'm moving on to disaster recovery so here people as said before your backup is separate and disaster recovery is separate so disaster recovery is to have your data or to keep your business continued in the market but even after when it is struck by a disaster so this is how you're going to follow so how to achieve it 
so the main and the major part of this is identification of risk or threats so when i say you have to identify your risks or threats that is you have to find your root or the cause of the threat that is happening around it is not only the threats regarding in your um, uh, geographical location it may also depend on the threats in other geographical locations because when i say a uh, a disaster it uh, accounts for both natural as well as your artificials i can categorize artificials under two categories like human errors and some malware attacks which is planned uh, so these are artificial uh, disaster which we have categorized as and natural disasters like your uh, uh, typhoons and your cyclones and all those stuff so even the rise of uh, disaster that is happening in the naturals so natural that is natural happening but that has a direct as well as an indirect effect on your data a data center so when i say indirect there are because of, because of the disaster which is happening around even if you have a good power system there may be some power outages that is happening around and even you can have some hardware and equipment failures that happens due to natural disasters so these are the indirect disasters that comes up so this may not be in your location if, like if you go if you're going to look only about the disasters on your geographical to or topological area it may not be in your location but you have to keep an uh, eye on each and every disasters that is happening around the world to keep your data center more pres uh, more secure and more protected so that you get awareness of what all the threats that you could face and uh, what are the risks that could lead you to those threats like this is something to keep you updated towards protection and that's how we start with so you have to identify each and every threat or risk and that is based on your location as well as the other locations as well and then when i move on you have analyzing and classifying the risk based on the relative weights so what is this analyzing and classifying why do i have to club put these two words together so when i say as uh, like uh, before identification when i identify those threats i have to categorize them based on my uh, th the probability of them affecting my uh, or the probability of their occurrence in my environment so when i categorize them i have to categorize or rank them from 1 to other to the scale of 5 so when i categorize them on the uh, one so it is like very high that gets more importance so that that uh, comes under the pure priority list of one so that gains more importance that is very high when i come to two that is high and third is for the medium level of importance that i have to give and four and five that gets the low and very low importance so i have to categorize them based on which i have set a probability and that is a cause or the uh, threat that i have to give more importance to so this is where you have to prioritize your risks based on your uh, identification that you have done before and third is like defining and prioritizing the resources now i after gaining that uh, analyst insights i should prioritize my resource or process so uh, like whenever the when uh, when i assume like uh, when i hit by a disaster or there is a disaster that's going to happen in my environment what i do is i have to prioritize i have to mark which all the resources are very important for me so that even when a disaster strikes i just continue with my process with only two or three files for example if i'm going to take a complete environment as a um, backup and i need only two or three files to keep myself uh, on live with the market so i only those two or three files is enough for me instead of re, uh, restoring the complete environment so that is how i have to prioritize i have to set things for my resources and the process so uh, what type of process should i have that should have a timely restore on all those stuff should be checked by having a clear view of your environment when i yeah so once that is done the determining the best recovery method so i should pr precisely have a better idea as said these two concepts the one which i've said before the prioritizing the resources and process as well as the determining the best recovery method comes both goes hand in hand because 
when I prioritize, I also should check for a best recovery method. So, for example, uh, when I take an image level backup, there are as everyone knows there are types of backups that you take either you can take a image level backup or you can go for a file level backup so when i restore when the disaster strikes there are enough with only two files that i can run my environment to keep myself alive then i can go with, uh, with one or two three files that makes me to be alive in the market so i would rather choose for file level recovery if not, if I need a complete image, then I have to go for image level recovery. This is how you have to choose a best recovery method. So based on the situation, so, uh, that is where your presence of mind comes in, where you choose your particular uh, type of recovery option. Either it could be a file level, your image level or a complete environment restore can also happen. So that this mainly keeps you keeps your time low and keeps you uh, keeps your resources enough. So go on with your process of being alive in the market space and then you have the evaluation of dr mechanism when i talk about this dr mechanism so after you set all the plans as stated before you have an evaluation criteria so before having or going into this evaluation you should form a team or a committee that to be named as a dr committee or a dr team so they those people should be aware of the stuff which is happening around and they should be the skilled peoples with all the ideology that is behind the DR mechanism. So they should have a clear cut plan of what to do and there should be each and every people uh, given their perfect roles and they have to act accordingly whenever the disaster strikes so that is how uh, if someone is looking after the backup then someone should be looking after the recovery and what type of recovery and uh, recovery of important items like that you have to d separate like division those uh, uh, portfolios to each and every people so that at the time of their disaster they give their better importance instead of one performing all the functions that should be divided so that everyone should uh, can concentrate on uh, their own functionalities and while doing this there should also this is a one step so this dr committee when it comes into the play or they are given the importance like they sh it is your responsibility to conduct the uh, uh, dr plan and they have to put this dr plan into evaluation by conducting dr drills like your fire drill that you conduct in your environment at uh, regular intervals you have to conduct with dr drills and also they should have an importance like uh, they should keep their dr plan updated by looking into other uh, disasters whichever has happened in many other sites so they should have a complete ideology of what things are happening around the globe and they have to collect those resources and they also should keep their dr plan updated for the day yes so so far we have explained what all the stuffs that a dr plan should have and how it should be implemented now we are going to see how to achieve the dr objectives so what are the plans that are to be uh, achieved by using the dr objectives mostly there are two to three phases that we all, always suggest from our side so uh, here is your uh, this is where you have to check out like which one will help for your environment for example if someone is going with the backup this is all interconnected so the uh, there is a backup and always it comes up with recovery so your backup is mainly uh, set to its importance only when you have a proper recovery and when i say this backup and recovery are go in hand there is also an option called replication so uh, there are options like live replication and uh, replicating uh, your back backup data to another environment so that whenever your source environment goes down you can boost boost it up from the uh, secondary environment so this replication also has a live synchronization so one environment goes down and you can have your member going to another environment and booting it from there so this is how you can have things and you have to choose which one will be best suited for your environment either you want to take a backup keep it archived and then whenever the disaster strikes you can go with a proper recovery option or move it or you want to go for a replication option and you have uh, and whenever the one goes for one falls down like a load balancer you can go for the other to boost things up so 
this is up to you to choose and it differs from environment to environment now when i after planning all these what i'm going to do like activation phase when i check on the phase of activation there are importance which i have to give that is like notification procedure so whenever there is a disaster whether you know it or not or it is in out of your um, work time it should give you a proper notification a proper notification procedure must be followed for all the dr plans or wherever you have to set your dr basically so uh, you should have a note proper notification plan after which you should assess all the damages that that is to happen so when you are aware of what things are going to happen then you can link uh, like basically you can reluctantly follow a better uh, option to restore your data and that is where your presence of mind hits up and there is also an option like dia activation planning so you should have a better idea only when you have a damage assessment ideology of like a futuristic approach you can have an dr activation planning which is set in phase before so all this activation phase is to keep you all ready for your um, disaster whenever so to keep you ready to face the disaster and the next is the execution phase in this execution phase you just have to go with the flow where your business operations are restored on the recovery system so uh, when you hit the disaster when the disaster is hit then you have to keep your execution all well planned so for which you should have a better activation phase planned and all your dr uh, should be um, perfect enough or ready enough to face this execution so when it happens to execution phase it automatically it is like auto loaded it is not a manual process so it gets things loaded and automatically you have the uh, process going up and w once your disaster strike phase uh, source environment goes down you can use it from your other dr environment and reconstitution phase this is the next phase of all things and this is an important phase so once your disaster is struck and you have faced the disaster and you are all you're all ready and you have a dr plan you still go on with the continuity of your business after which after the disaster you should have a proper phasing of retrieving uh, back to your normal phase like or you after your disaster ends your disaster recovery has come make your system and you have successfully faced the disaster what happens is like you have to bring back to the normal so this is the reconstitution phase like bringing back to the normal and also having a record of all the disaster that happened now and moving on to the next updated phase so this is the reconstitution phase that i'm going to talk about this this is how this will bring back the whole environment to the normal state and keeps you still to the back end so so far we have discussed about the basic importance of what a dr plan can do and how to achieve it and the three different phases that, are, that makes you ready like activation phase and uh, uh, you have your execution phase and comes your reconstitution phase this is bringing back to your normal state so we have set all things up and you can face your disaster whatever disaster it is you can face it up and now we are going to see how wembu helps or how wembu helps to face your uh, face these type of disasters and what type of uh, solution as a backup and software backup and disaster recovery uh, solution provider we as wembu team wembu provides so to take on this we have nivas so nivas the forum is all yours so we are ready to hear all your insights <clears throat> hey pranam uh thanks for that uh, wonderful information about uh, the dr planning and this execution phase so it was nice so so you you covered almost everything about your planning so firstly you mentioned about how you want to identify the uh, threats and then you started with the the possible threats yeah and uh, next in this you you mentioned about how you want to analyze the uh, the severity and likelihood of the disasters um well that was nice and you mentioned about something right uh so you want to 
uh, the probability of the occurrence and you want to you want to mark uh, the probability of the occurrence and level of distribution that was actually a nice so yes you guys yeah, so if you're planning for a disaster you just you need to follow these steps you just take a uh, you first you just uh, you want to take the resources you just need to uh, pull up all your resources and you want to prioritize so which resources that needs a protection or it can be resources or it can be a, a business process that you follow in your business you just need to take it off uh, you need to prioritize that role so Pranav would have explained that uh, very clearly in, in his presentation and uh, yes so you want to know so which recovery methods that you want to uh, apply to recover the business back okay so these are the uh, things that uh, uh, Pranav explained and it was much useful for uh, everyone and it, actually it's much useful for me okay so so i'll just start with so so we have uh, discussed about uh, and we saw about how you can create a plan and how you can execute the plan and how to protect yourself from a disaster so here i will just give a small uh, uh insight about waymo so how we can help in protecting your business critical data and how you can protect your uh, business from a disaster yes see uh, let's jump into the other slides so waymo is offering uh, backup as I said earlier in this uh, presentation so we are providing backup solution for various IT environment whether it is a virtual or physical or cloud so we are providing backup solution for everything so first we are providing backup solution for your backup and replication for your VMware uh, virtual machines so whether it is a, a, a ESXi or you can add your uh, vCenter can configure the backups for all your virtual machines you can back up the virtual machine or store it on your local um, a storage repository or you can replicate the virtual machines from one year's exit to another year's exit host both both the backup and replication are agentless with Webu. and uh, yes yeah, so we have multiple uh, recovery options if something goes wrong with the backup data you'll be able to restore the backup data into multiple options and you can choose it on your own second we have a backup solution for your uh hyper-v virtual machines so whether it is a standalone host or cluster so you can back up your virtual machines even uh so we have recently released uh the latest version of Webu, so which is 4.1 and from this we have started uh supporting backup for the scale out file server also and then be providing the backups image level backup solution for your windows workstations and the servers so it will take the backup of the entire mission if something goes wrong you can perform a bare metal recovery or you can uh, migrate the uh, backup data or physical the backup data of a physical mission to a virtualized environment so this comes with the inbuilt uh, platform migration yeah and coming to the next so we do have a backup solution for the uh, files and applications so this is a legacy backup solution so you can back up your files and folders or applications such as exchange sql or sharepoint outlook and mysql so you can either directly to the on-premise uh, storage medium or you can directly back up to waymo cloud so we put for both option and uh, so we recently released uh, the backup for office 365 g suite so now it is in beta state so you can back up your uh, mailbox contacts calendars and even the uh, backup data from uh, one drive file data files and folders from one drive and google drive so we do provide a uh, cloud-based uh, backup so you can directly back up from the Waymo uh, g suite cloud or office 365 cloud to Waymo cloud or else you can so we do provide a installer now so you can just install this uh, uh, this uh, offsite uh, office 365 G Suite backup in your local machine, and you can take a local backup and store your backup data in your local uh, hard drives. Then you provide disaster recovery solution. So you have all your backup data, so you can replicate these backup data to an offsite server or to Waymo Cloud. If something goes wrong uh, with the primary backup server, if something goes wrong, or for example, if the hardware crashes or uh, if a disaster, a natural disaster strikes your on premise environment and uh, the production machines and the backup data goes down you don't need to worry so you have a copy of data replicated to a Bamboo cloud or to your own data center in a different geography you will be able to restore the data from there so we do provide dr and uh, yeah so these are the basic offerings from Bamboo. and uh, coming to so yeah so as i thought of uh, I said earlier so we have recently released the uh, the new version of Bamboo media with the 4.1 so these are the features uh, that came in that particular release so so the more the first one is the most awaited um, uh, feature that is the oracle 
uh, application aware processing for the oracle database so as of now so we have introduced uh, this application aware processing for the oracle database in vma virtual machines uh, soon you will get this application aware processing uh, for oracle databases in other image based backups such as hyper backup and uh, windows image backups so you can expect this in the next release of embo yeah and said earlier so we do now started supporting uh, for the hyper v uh, scared file servers previously uh, if you want to back up your data from a file server so we recommend you to install an agent but you don't need now you can just uh, add the scared file server directly to your uh, backup infrastructure and it will list all the virtual machines that are running on sofs and you can select the virtual machine and can configure backup for it and uh, we recently uh, introduced the backup proxy for the vmware backups okay previously we do have a separate client so using the separate client uh, you can distribute the load between the multiple clients and you can reduce the uh, workload on the backup server so but we have uh, made it more uh, effortless by introducing this backup proxy so just in just in, uh, uh, install multiple backup proxies on your windows machine so while configuring the backup so you can either uh, set your backup server as a proxy the backup server will take care of the particular backup job or if you want to distribute a load you can make use of the proxy so you can just uh, while configuring the backup job you can just mention so this backup job can be processed by should be processed by that particular proxy so this particular proxy will take care of all the backup configuration and the uh, incremental snapshot activities everything the backup uh, proxy will take care of. so you will get obviously uh, the backup server will have a a good response over the uh, storing the backups Okay, so that it's, it's like distributing a load between the multiple proxies and uh, so yes so we have updated our uh, changed block tracking technology for the hyper vms previously we have uh, our own drivers to track that uh, the changes that are made uh, on the vm disk and later we introduce the checksum based incrementals uh, to track the changes okay so now we are um, uh, leveraging on the microsoft native rct so to track the changes so this is applicable only for the um, a host uh, way of microsoft windows server 2016 and above if you are running 2016 and above so all the change block trackings is now tracked by rct okay uh, so you can track the um, so in, in any case if this microsoft rct goes down or if it's failing to track the changes you don't need to worry so we have our checksum based uh, incremental and our uh, uh, native so be the our in-house driver is ready to track the changes Okay, so this is an uh, just a, a technology upgrade uh, to how you are tracking the uh, backup data uh, for the hyper VMs. And uh, yeah, the last one is so now we have a, a, a improved that uh, image integrated check of Vembo. So we can we made it even more customizable. So previously, all your backup data is checked for the recoverability in every 24 hours. So every 24 hours, we do perform the three tier checks. But now you can customize it, so you can check. If if you don't want to perform all three checks, you can just disable some of the uh, the checks or the tire verification, okay? And you can you also customize. So uh, uh, for how long, for in how frequently you want to uh, perform this integrity check. So this kind of customization uh, uh, we are we provided with this release, and we have also addressed the uh, many of the customer reported and support uh, issues. So we, we we hear from all our customers. So if any customer a customer is uh, telling any kind of issue with the previous versions of MBBDS, so we take take a note of it, and we uh, try fixing it all in over the latest uh, release. And apart from this, so this version of Bamboo is even more stable, and even the performance is improved, and we have fixed some bugs. So so these are the things that are, uh, came with the latest version of MBBDR. So now we'll jump directly jump into the product demonstration. So I'll just give a small overview of how Vembo works. Okay, so how to deploy the Vembo and how to configure the storage and how to configure the backups. So it's a small presentation, just uh, five to ten minutes of presentation. Okay. Uh, at the end, after this presentation, uh, we can have a small discussion. We have a Q&A. So if you have any question, you can just uh, you can ask me and I can get your questions clarified. Yeah, I hope you all can see my machine. So this is one of my uh, uh, server operating system where I have installed the Vembo. So I have installed the latest version of Vembo and configured some backups. So, so installing Vembo is pretty simple. So just go to a website and click on this free trial. 
so it will take you to the page where you can download the uh, installer so the installers are now available for the windows and linux operating systems so so these are the operating system you can install the Vemo media server okay so this is a, this is a backup server component so the archi- as for the architecture of Vemo, so we have two components the one is the backup server and the backup clients so the backup server is the mandatory one and you can install the backup server on a windows and linux operating systems so yes, so just download the setup and you can install the setup on your machine and you are now ready to configure the backups. So this installation is pretty straightforward. So if you are providing an installer, so which is bundled with all the prerequisites, just download and install and you can configure the backup. So once after installing this um, uh, application, you will get a shortcut like this. So just maybe media server, just click to open it. And this is a web-based interface. You can access this console from any machine just by entering the IP address uh, of the machine where you have installed it and followed by the port number. So this is the dashboard. You can see all the backup activities from here. So the, the recent backup job, the recent failure jobs, everything you can see from here. And the first thing that you need to do after uh, installing this um, application is the storage configuration. To, to configure the storage, just go to the management of your storage pool. So you can configure the storage so you can use your physical volumes or if you have a network drives, you can use that to store the backup data. Okay, so configure the backup. So to configure the backup, just click on VM or vSphere. So I've just ex- given an example of how you can configure the backup. So the backup configuration is uh, st- pretty straightforward and it is the same for all uh, VMware, Hyper-V and uh, uh, image level backups. Okay, you can configure all the backup from this dashboard itself. So to first you need to add your uh, host to this backup infrastructure just by providing the IP address of the host name uh, for the credential. So once it's, your host is added, it will be listed here. Uh, just select configure backup. So it will list out all the virtual machines running in that particular host. Uh, you just need to select the virtual machines and you can configure the backups for it. So it, it listed all the virtual machines running on that particular host. You just need to select the virtual machines you want to backup. Okay, then you can just click on next. If you want to exclude any virtual machines or disk from the backup, you can make use of this option, uh, VM or disk exclusion. Uh, then click on next. So yes, so so this is the, th- uh, the application of processing. So if you have any applications running inside this machine, uh, you can just enable the application of processing. So we quiz the application uh, writers and we'll check for the stability of the application writers and then we'll process the backup. So here we have introduced this uh, uh, application I'm processing for the Oracle backups. So just enable the application I'm processing and click on customize. So just click on the mission and just click on edit. So here you can see. So previously we have application I'm processing only for the Microsoft applications. Now we have introduced for the Oracle databases too. So if you want to uh, configure the application I'm processing, you need to give the credentials of this uh, Oracle database. Then even we have introduced this uh, file exclusion, system file exclusion. So with this feature, you can now exclude the system files like a page files.sys and a hyper file.sys file you can exclude from the backup. Okay. Uh, once after selecting this application we're processing, so you need to give the credentials of these virtual machines. Then, uh, so here the, the next screen is you need to select the frequency. The frequency for the uh, incremental backup is starting from 15 minutes. Um, so you can back up your uh, all your virtual machines the 15 minutes of interval okay and we have multiple frequencies you can run your backups daily or weekly and even if you want to schedule an additional full backup yes we have an option just enable this and you can schedule an additional full backups you click on next here's the retention policies we do have a two retention uh, kinds of retention policies the first one is a basic retention so this basic retention allows you to keep up to last nine nine hundred ninety nine days of recovery points okay um, almost the two out of the three years of recovery points you can have okay or else you can go for this GFS retention so this is based on uh, the merging uh, options so you can just select uh, how you want the backup data to get merged so you can either offer any one of this uh, retention policies and you need to select the value you want to store the backup data you just need to select the storage pool and if you want to encrypt the backup data you just can click on enable and you can set a password to encrypt your backup data so this is a proxy setting so if you want to configure this backup through an uh, external proxy uh, so you just need to install the proxy so to install the proxy just click on add proxy server you need to uh, enter the IP address of the mission where you would like which the mission which you like to use as a proxy so once you enter the IP address of the mission and if you give the credential of the mission so we install a small agent on that particular mission uh, once this agent get installed 
uh, your proxies will be listed here. You can just select the proxy and uh, now uh, this backup process will be uh, distributed to this proxy. Or else you can use this server as a proxy. Yeah. Okay, the next, click on next. So that's all. So you just need to give the name for the backup job and you can save the backup. So it's a pretty straightforward. So the same steps is for configuring the backup for Hyper-V and uh, 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 VM, uh, VMware virtual machines and also for the disk image backups. So only for the files and application backups. So we are providing a separate agent. So these new agents need to be installed on the target machine. And once this agent get installed, you can configure the backup. And you can also uh, replicate the VMware virtual machines. If you like to replicate the virtual machines from one ESX to another ESX host, yes, you can do it. So just, uh, so it's pretty straightforward. If something goes wrong, so you have completed the replication. If something goes wrong, you can fail over that. Uh, if something goes wrong with this uh, source machine, you don't need to worry. So you can just fail over the replicated machine and you can start your work from there. Or even you can fail back to the same or different host. We do support tape, tape backup. And coming to recovery, uh, so the recovery is now uh, even more faster with after uh, this 4.1 upgrade. So just let us take this VMware backup as an example. So we have six recovery options. The first one is a quick film recovery. Uh, so this is one of that uh, powerful recovery option from Webo. So which allow you to instantly boot the backup data. So, so if something goes wrong, okay, and you don't want to have any downtime, you can just instantly boot it as a uh, you just instantly boot it as a uh, uh, virtual machine on your Hyper-V or VMware or KVM environment. So this is almost an instant recovery process. Okay. The next one is a live recovery. So this is a traditional recovery which will copy the data from the source and it based it on a data store and create a new virtual machine. And we have a file level recovery. So this is a granular recovery which allow you to recover the in, uh, individual files and folders from the backup data. Then we have the disk management mount. So this allow you to uh, uh, I'll, uh, attach the local uh, backup data to the disk management of this backup server machine. And once it is attached, you'll be able to uh, browse through the attached folders and you're able to reshare the backup data from there. And the next one is a disk level recovery. So this option allow you to attach the backup VMDK to another virtual machine of your choice. So you can just uh, turn off the target machine, connect this VMDK to the that target machine. And when you open the, when you boot the machine, you can see a new disk attached there. So, and the next one is the download. So this is another unique recovery option from Webo. So which allow you to download the backup data into multiple file formats. So whether it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a VMware backup, but I can still download the backup data into VHD, VMDK, BSDX, flat VMDK and raw. So this option, um, by downloading the backup data into multiple file formats, you can perform a migration. For example, if you want to migrate this VMware virtual machines to Hyper-V or Hyper-V virtual machines to VMware, even the physical machines to any virtualized environment, you can do it. Okay, so this is the backup and recovery phase. Okay, so now let's see. So as this uh, webinar is purely based on the DR uh, planning and the DR best practices and the, the phases of this disaster recovery, we'll now see how you can configure this DR with Webo. So just click on management and click on offset copy. Just click on configure. So you just need to enable offset copy. So here we have throwing two options. Uh, either you can replicate a copy of backup data to Webo Cloud or if you have your own data center in a different location, you can send it to uh, that particular data center. For example, if you have an uh, offsite data center, in that offsite data center, you can install, you need to install, if you if you like to store a copy of backup data in an offsite data center, you need to install uh, the Vembu offsite DR server on that particular data center. So it is another piece of application from Vembu. So you can download uh, by just clicking on this download button. So you have to uh, just click on if you if you like to uh, uh, enable an offset copy, just click on this offset DS server, and you need to just download the setup from Bembo website. You just install it on that offset location, and once the setup is installed on the offset location, you come back to your backup server. Just click on Bembo offset DS server. Enter the IP address of the machine where you have installed this offset DS application. Uh, just do some basic settings. You can uh, uh, you can schedule the window or you can schedule the different retention policy for this offset server. Yes, you can do it. You can also throttle the bandwidth. And even if you want to see the existing backup data uh, uh, through any external medium, you can also do it. 
so these are the basic settings that you need to give and click on save so once you click on save so all the backup data from this backup server will now get replicated to the ds server okay in any case if something goes wrong with the primary backup server if the primary uh, production uh, location is entirely affected by a disaster or a malware attack or a hardware failure you don't need to worry so you have a copy of data replicated to the offset location just log into the offset ds server and you have the same set of record features there and you'll be able to record your virtual machines from there virtual machines or any data from there okay so this is if you have an offset location in any case if you're not having a any offset location and if you're looking for a hybrid deployment then you can offer waymo cloud so you just sign up for waymo cloud account just go to portal.waymo.com sign up for waymo cloud account and register your backup server so you just click on this license and register your backup server with the particular portal account and uh, once you have successfully registered and uh, come to this configure again just click on waymo cloud here and click on save now all the backup data from this local backup server will get replicated to waymo cloud again in any case if something goes wrong with the primary backup server you can just log into waymo cloud and you can see all the backup data replicated there you can just initiate the recovery download the backup data and use it for the recovery purposes so soon we are planning to uh, bring some coolest feature there so for example uh, in future uh, you can directly spin the backup data as a virtual machine on aws so these features are coming in the upcoming releases of Ebo. Uh so once or uh, these these features are released so we'll notify you through an email okay um, so i just explained the basic features and functionalities of Ebo. Uh, as i said uh, the beta for uh, the office 365 ng suite backup is now out so you can just uh, go to the website and click on this download for free either you can uh, test it for this on-premise version of uh, g suite and office 365 backup so it, it requires you to download this install and install it on your machine and you can configure the backup so you just need to connect your office 365 account or g suite account and you can configure the backup for your mailbox and calendars or else you can just sign up for the SaaS model of Office 365 and G Suite backup. It's a cloud to cloud based backup. Okay. And uh, yeah. So so these are the basic features and functionalities of Memo. So uh, so if you'd like to have a uh, one on one uh, uh, customized session with us, uh, we are happy to do it for you also. Or if you'd like to uh, set up uh, or if you'd like to define a DR plan or if you'd like to set up a backup environment for your business Yes, we are happy to assist you. So just uh, go to vembo.com And just scroll down here. You can see these phone numbers and email you just contact our support or your sales so we are happy to uh, Schedule a personalized session for you and help you in uh, uh, Configuring or setting up a DR plan for your business so so this is all about this uh, particular webinar session. So all Vemo products are comes with the 30 days of free trial. If you'd like to test the product, so just go to this come to Vemo website, uh, click on this free trial. You can download the product and test it for 30 days. Okay. So if you need any assistance during this uh, testing phase, uh, you please feel to, free to contact us. So we have a 24 bar seven support. So our support engineers or just uh, email. Or phone call just a chat away so you can uh, contact us through any one of the available medium and you can get assistance from us and uh, yeah so so this is all about the Vembo. so actually we, we end up getting a lot of questions so one of our representative was uh, trying to answer um, all your questions okay so so if you're not able to answer all your questions uh, in this uh, session itself so uh, don't worry so we are uh, we are just uh, answer to all your questions after the session through an email so we have uh, the registered emails the questions will be answered through the registered email okay um, so if you have any question you just uh, type in your all your questions in the question box okay the session will be kept open for another uh, two minutes so your questions will be answered uh, soon in any case, if you'd like to know more about the Vembo, so you can just contact uh, uh, through these numbers or emails. So our support engineers or sales engineers will help in uh, assisting you. Hey guys, uh, thanks for attending this webinar. So we have answered uh, most of the questions. So we still have some questions that need to be uh, answered. So no worries, uh, we'll try to answer it through an email. So yeah. So thanks for showing interest and thanks for joining this webinar. 
have a nice day